faith on Friday and introduction. So usually on a Friday at St John's Walton we have a service of Holy Communion at 9.30 followed by book club and then our coffee morning. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the 9.30 part um, because we've transferred our book club substitute to Wednesday's midweek introductions. So as part of Faith on Friday, I'm going to include the readings for uh, communion, um, perhaps uh, a short thought on those readings, and then conclude with the collect. Uh, but shout out to uh, Anne and to Mary and to Jean and to Chris, who regularly attend on a Friday. I'm standing at the altar looking at your empty seats hoping that you're all okay. Friday the 20th of March, which is also St Cuthbert's Day. A reading from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, this command I gave them, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk only in the way that I command you so that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear but in the stubbornness of their evil will, they walked in their own counsels and looked backwards rather than forwards. From the day that your ancestors came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have persistently sent all my servants, the prophets, to them day after day. Yet they did not listen to me or pay attention, but they stiffened their necks. They did worse than their ancestors did. So you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. You shall say to them, This is the nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, and did not accept discipline. Truth has perished, it is cut off from their lips. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the one who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. Others, to test him, kept demanding from him a sign from heaven. But he knew what they were thinking and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself becomes a desert, and house falls on house. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out the demons by Beelzebul. Now if I cast out the demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your exorcists cast them out? They will be your judges. But if, if, if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his castle, his property is safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away his armour in which he trusted and divides his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Now, on Fridays, there's usually a slight pause at this moment where I do a little scoot round the side of the, the altar in the side chapel and uh, stand at the front and, and talk to my, uh, my small congregation. And we usually find ourselves entering something of a, a, a back and forth um, with me starting it off, and I like to see how people respond. Obviously, I don't have that today, so I'm just looking at those uh, empty chairs, but I'll do my best. The reading from the prophecy of Jeremiah is uh, quite uh, pertinent, typically prophetic and uh, slightly doom-mongering, but you do get the sense of it of uh, people persistently not listening can't help thinking of those who are stockpiling, despite the fact that uh, older people, people with um, allergies, need 
uh, access to provisions need perhaps specific provisions more than they do. And I think we've just got to call that out as uh, selfishness. In our Gospel from uh, Luke, interestingly, on a side point, it refers to a sign, uh, possibly the influence of John's Gospel, if you follow my New Testament tutor from university. Um, but more than that, I was particularly struck by the idea that a kingdom uh, turned against itself, divided against itself, cannot stand. And much as I think he is prone to occasional uh, hyperbole, 12 weeks sounds quite optimistic, I think uh, I do have a certain sympathy with Boris Johnson saying that we all need to pull together on the hygiene measures, which of course we do. So, not entirely inappropriately, today's readings counsel us to listen to the big picture messages and to work together. Of course, it's also St Cuthbert's Day today. Um, St Cuthbert has a special place in my heart um, because from a very early age, my absolute favourite place in all the world was probably Durham Cathedral which, of course, is the shrine of St Cuthbert. And it's interesting, if you go in Durham Cathedral and you go towards the East End, just before you get to the Chapel of the Nine Altars, and you go into St Cuthbert's shrine, and there's a, a very large but simple marble uh, plaque on the uh, floor of the shrine, marking the point where the original um, medieval... Uh, construction would have been. And of course that was taken away in the Reformation period. Uh, we can't of course compare what's happening now to the Reformation, but I suppose it's worth noting that different periods of history come and go and we're left with the consequences. So I've been thinking quite a lot in the past few days what the consequences of this period might be. We're already seeing in the natural world something of a recovery. Um, canals in Venice with fish coming back. The, um, I think the CO2 levels over in New York are half what they were at this time last year. I remember a graphic from the BBC, I think Wuhan uh, in China a few weeks ago, and the smog levels were considerably reduced. Now, I'm not saying for one minute that there's a silver lining in all of this, but perhaps on the other side of the coronavirus, we might be able to re-examine how we live and the impacts that we have on the planet and those big picture messages that we do need to listen to and those bigger stories which we all need to be a part of can become as much a part of our lives as the coronavirus. Thank you for listening. We conclude with the collect. Um, my usual practice is to use the collect for the coming Sunday. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins by which our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, our most blessed Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.